In the 1980s, Sandy Kid was attempting to use the properties of gyroscopes to generate lift. This would mean in space travel, very, very high speeds. To do this, he designed a machine that composed of gyroscopes in a certain configuration, and the configuration was rotated about an axis. Open up the universe. His idea worked off the concept shown here. This concept is explained by Robert Cook in his own patent for a similar machine here, where gyroscopes in a specific configuration and motion allow for the torque to be converted into linear motion. Sandy had supposedly proven the device in home experiments, demonstrating a reduction in weight of his device. The machine lifted against the counterweight and stayed up. I could hardly believe it. There was a feeling of sheer joy and relief. I'd done it. Cracked it. He was able to connect with the Imperial College of Science and Technology to undergo proper testing on his setup. If I could make the torque reaction of the gyro overcome the centrifugal force, there's a yeah. point where these yeah. are free flying. And I expected the vertical. vertical and hope to bring it to the mainstream if it is allowed. Is it going to change the world? I think it will, if it's allowed. Since then, controversy has surrounded his methods and mainstream science has denied his design. However, it hasn't stopped curious minds from testing and working on the idea further. A paper by Karsten Quinlan published in 2022 described a similar effect that also proved the viability of such a device. However, admitted that this is an incomplete explanation that is likely missing consideration of electromagnetic effects. They do state that may be part of the explanation for the propulsion systems of some UAPs. Researchers and inventors have taken to recreating kids' ideas, designing and testing devices of their own with mixed results. See, at this point, I'm spinning the whole apparatus with this motor here. And uh, as you can hear, the vibration has stopped. What has happened is the two gyroscopes have more or less stopped their spinning. And uh, you know, I, I can't explain uh, why. Notice the gyroscopes slow down when the configuration was rotated in one direction. This slowing down is supposedly caused by the rotational energy of the gyroscopes being converted to a lifting force or linear motion in the device, however the friction this causes is too much for the gyroscopes, and they slow down. We have made suggestions for how the device works exactly and how it should be improved to generate sufficient lift, and admit that some freedom in the gyroscopes movement may be necessary to allow such lift. It's unknown how a perfect design is made, however Mike Gamble, an inventor and former Boeing engineer, claims that gyroscopic inertial propulsion is already used in some satellites for station keeping. He has documented the force generated by his own gyroscopic inertial propulsion devices. Other scientists have taken to using the Lorentz force to create a vortex of mercury to generate this gyroscopic inertial effect. Action Lab explains with gallium how this works. Electrons are going to be moving at right angles to the magnetic field. Now when you move electrons at right angles to magnetic field, an interesting thing happens and it's called the Lorentz force. When an electron moves, it creates its own magnetic field. Now that magnetic field is going to oppose the magnetic field upward like this at a right angle. But because we don't have a normal conductor here, we actually have a liquid conductor. What can happen is instead of the electrons getting pushed, the electrons are going to push the actual material that they're part of. So they're going to push the atoms of gallium instead of the electrons themselves being pushed. Whoa. Whoa. In the 1990s, Spartak Polyakov used this property of mercury, constructing what is called a mercury vortex engine. In the 90s of the last century, the physicist inventor Spartak Polyakov was engaged in the anti-gravity capabilities of mercury. The point of the research was to create a vertical thrust using a device that accelerates liquid mercury through spiral channels in a closed space. Polyakov was able to get a small level of thrust of several pounds.
action. Other suggestions for the propulsion systems used in UAPs involve designs like this, which use ion thrust to produce lift. The device shown can generate enough to support the weight of a stick. Opposing magnetic forces can also produce an effect that opposes gravity, as Boyd Bushman, a former Lockheed Martin engineer, explains. If gravity could be uh, related to its cousin magnetism, so I, uh, I found that when I take two magnets together, you take a magnet, you go to put them together and go, and they go clunk, right? Mm. But you take one of them, move it around, and all of a sudden it doesn't want to yeah, go right. The repulsive. So I got. Uh, I had I ordered one at five thousand dollars a piece, wow. with 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 a quarter inch hole through between both of them, and I put a brass bolt and I tightened them down, forcing them together, mm -hmm. and then I put them together in a thing that looks kind of like a rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I got another one that didn't have magnets in it, mm -hmm. and uh, Galileo in in all his endeavors. He went up to the Lean Tower of Pisa and dropped the and he dropped a big rock and a small rock. Mm -hmm. And his buddy down at the bottom kept telling him that the large rock, rock and small rock arrived at the same time. And I dropped my two rocks. Mm -hmm. All the nine times that I tested it, the other rock arrived first. Which one arrived first? The one. The one that had no magnetic field in it. So you were able to cancel out gravity to a certain degree. You were you able like to that? cancel, Precisely. reduce the mass gravity effect. Precisely. By, okay. by opposing fields. Isn't that nice? You, you bet. And got nine signatures and wit. I One seemingly plausible method that combines many of the methods proposed above is magnetohydrodynamic propulsion, explained by Asterin X, which accounts for the shapes and capabilities of the UAPs observed. MHD propelled vehicle must first ionize the air. This can be done in one of several ways, but one of the most efficient methods is known as high frequency pulse discharge, or HF pulse discharge for short. This is where an alternating current at radio to microwave frequency or higher produces electromagnetic radiation in fields that ionizes air or other gases very efficiently. The ionized air then forms a conductive sheath just off of the surface which absorbs all or most of the emitted radiation. Once the air is ionized, it can be moved via electromagnetic forces such as the Lorentz force or via an ion wind effect. All over the surface of the craft are located microwave beam transmitters, MT1, used for ionizing the surrounding air. Also on the surface and surrounding the entire craft is an array of liquid nitrogen cooled cryogenic superconducting wires, SW1, which generates a magnetic field B. Adjacent and parallel to those superconducting wires are a series of linear electrodes, EL1, which generates a current I within the now ionized air. When a current is applied to the two parallel conductors, SW1 and EL1, whose polarities are alternately flipped, the magnetic field of SW1 and the electric current induced by EL1 cross at right angles with respect to one another, which generates a force known as the Laplace force, F. It is the Laplace force that is responsible for increasing or decreasing the kinetic energy of a conductive medium. Basically, by manipulating the current throughout various segments of the conductors, the air is accelerated and decelerated, which translates into the craft also being accelerated and decelerated, moved up or down and side to side rapidly without a single moving part. Patents exist for vehicles like this, one in particular shown here dating May 30, 1967 and there have been reports of Lockheed Martin being in possession of such technology. While this seems to satisfy the search for an explanation, many other explanations for how UAPs might operate have been suggested. Ning Li is a scientist who discovered the anti-gravity properties of superconductors, as explained by Barely Sociable. 90s. Ning Li's main claim to fame here seemed to come from a variety of her peer-reviewed papers that she published during this time, in which a theory of hers predicted a practical way to create an anti-gravity effect. Uh, I see the theory already hold there, you know, they publish it through the review process. Then that's very con controversial. I, I know a lot of people criticize it. Uh, but uh, 
Fortunately, nobody found any mistake in my papers. <laughs> so just about no mistake, but people don't believe it. I know uh, uh, until I got an experimental result that can show people. Shubal. Mercury was the first superconductor discovered and becomes superconductive at 4 degrees Kelvin, which can be achieved by cooling it down using helium. This might also account for the reports in history, mainly India's Vedic Vimanas, of flying machines that run on mercury, although the mercury vortex engine discussed earlier may also account for this. Arguably the most famous and most advanced example and explanation is from Bob Lazar, providing a breakdown of how he believes an anti-gravity device he reverse-engineered operates. Lazar's credibility tends to hold up under public scrutiny. All sources will be located in the description below so you can have a look at the full videos and channels and do your own research from there. Gravity is generated or accessed and amplified. You must first know what gravity is. There are two main theories. The wave theory which states that gravity is a wave and the currently accepted theory of gravitons which are alleged subatomic particles that perform as, uh, as gravity which is total nonsense. Well, gravity is a wave and there are two specific different types of gravity. Gravity A and Gravity B. Gravity A works on a smaller micro scale, while Gravity B works on a larger macro scale. We are familiar with Gravity B. It is the big gravity wave that holds the Earth as well as the rest of the planets in orbit around the Sun and holds the Moon as well as man-made satellites in orbit around the Earth. We are not familiar with Gravity A. It is the small gravity wave, which is the major contributory force that holds together the mass that makes up all protons and neutrons. Gravity A is what is currently being labeled as the strong nuclear force in mainstream physics, and gravity A is the wave that you need to access and amplify in it to enable you to cause space-time distortion for interstellar travel. To keep them straight, just remember that gravity A works on an atomic scale, and gravity B is the big gravity wave that works on a stellar or planetary level. However, don't mistake the size of these waves for their strength because gravity A is a much stronger force than gravity B. You can momentarily break the gravity B field of the Earth simply by jumping in the air. So this is not an intense gravitational field. Locating gravity A is no problem because it is found in the nucleus of every atom of all matter here on Earth and all matter anywhere else in our universe. However, accessing gravity A with the naturally occurring elements found on Earth is a big problem. Actually, I'm not aware of any way of accessing the gravity A wave using any Earth elements, whether naturally occurring or synthesized, and here's why.